The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into, and they are safe. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into, and they are safe. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into, and they are safe. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into, and they are safe. Oh yes, they are safe, totally hidden in. They are safe. Oh yes, the righteous run into it. His name. Oh, you can be many a place and have something fearsome or somebody come up to you. And all you got to do is go, in the name of Jesus, I've had it happen. Woo! Off they go, or they shut up, or whatever happens. His name is powerful. You can hide in it. You can run into it. We are his body. We belong to his name. I mean, we could go on. Uh, we could just spend the whole 45 minutes just talking about that, couldn't we? Well, welcome to the reading of the Word of God. Welcome to the Word that matters, that counts, that is the final say. And on this September 25, September 25, we are continuing on this great, great venture of Isaiah, mighty, mighty prophet. We are up to chapter 45. We began that one yesterday, and today we will pick up with verse 11. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 11. So open our ears, Lord, that we might truly hear. Open our eyes that we might truly see on this September 25 and be enriched, encouraged, built up, filled with your word today. So it starts right off. Isaiah was tuned in. Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker, ask of me things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands. You command me. I have made the earth and created man on it. I, my hands, stretched out the heavens and all their hosts I have commanded. I have raised him up in righteousness and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city and let my exiles go free, not for price nor reward, says the Lord of hosts. And who is he talking about here? He is talking about, it's like a double standard, isn't it? We could apply everything to the Lord. But also in this chapter, we are hearing about this marvelous man named Cyrus. Cyrus, thus says the Lord, the labor of Egypt and merchandise of Cush and of the Sabians, men of stature, shall come over to you and they shall be yours. They shall walk behind you. They shall come over in chains. Whoa. And they shall bow down to you. They will make supplication to you, saying, Surely God is with you. And there is no other. There is no other God. Wonderful, huh? Truly. You are God who hide yourself, O God of Israel, the Savior. They shall be ashamed and also disgraced, all of them. They shall go in confusion together, who are makers of idols, 
but Israel shall be saved by the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed or disgraced forever and ever. For thus says the Lord, who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I did not say to the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. So, with that being decreed and set in motion forever with his words, if we follow him, we are following things that are right, aren't we? Righteousness. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, you who have escaped from the nations. They have no knowledge. Who carry the wood of their carved image and pray to a God that cannot save? Tell and bring forth your case. Yes, let them take counsel together. Who has declared this from ancient times? Who has told it from that time? Have not I, the Lord? And there is no other God besides me, a just God and a Savior, there is none besides me. Look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. I have sworn by myself. The word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, that to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath. He shall say, Surely in the Lord I have righteousness and strength. To him men shall come, and all shall be ashamed to our incense against him. In the Lord all the descendants of Israel shall be justified and shall glory. And we move right along to chapter 46. Baal bows down, Nebo stoops. Their idols were on the beasts and on the cattle. <clears throat> Your carriages were heavily loaded, a burden to the weary beast. They stoop, they bow down together. They could not deliver the burden, but have themselves gone into captivity. Listen to me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, who have been upheld by me from birth, who have been carried from the womb even to your old age. Ooh, those are good words for me. I am he, and even to gray hairs I will carry you, and white too. <laughs> I have made and I will bear, even I will carry and will deliver you. To whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me that we should be alike? They lavish gold out of the bag, the sil they weigh silver on the scales. They hire a goldsmith and he makes it a god. They prostrate themselves. Yes, they worship. They bear it on the shoulder. They carry it and they set it in its place and it stands. From its place, it shall not move. They are worshiping this idol that doesn't move, doesn't talk, doesn't hear. Though no one cries out to it, Yet it cannot answer, nor save him out of trouble. 
Remember this and show yourselves men. Recall to mind, O oh, you transgressors. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure, calling a bird of prey from the east, the man who executes my counsel from a far country. Indeed, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. Listen to me, you stubborn-hearted who are fat from righteousness. I bring my righteousness near. It shall not be far off. My salvation shall not linger, and I will place salvation in Zion, Zion, for Israel, my glory. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground without a throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind meal, Remove your veil, take off the skirt, uncover the thigh, pass through the waters. Your nakedness shall be uncovered. Yes, your shame will be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not arbitrate with a man. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name the Holy One of Israel. <clears throat> He's the Holy One of Israel. He's the Holy One of Israel. Sit in silence and go into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall no longer be called the Lady of the Kingdoms. I was angry with my people, I have profaned my inheritance and given them into your hand. You showed them no mercy. On the elderly, you laid your yoke very heavily. And you said, I shall be a lady forever. So that you did not take these things to heart. Nor remember the latter end of them. Therefore, hear this now. You who are given to pleasures, who dwell securely, who say in your heart, I am, and there is no one else besides me. I shall not sit as a widow, nor shall I know the loss of children. But these two things shall come to you in a moment, in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon you in their fullness because of the multitude of your sorceries, for the great abundance of your enchantments, for you have trusted in your wickedness. You have said, no one sees me. Your wisdom and your knowledge have warped you. And you have said in your heart, I am, and there is no one else besides me. Therefore, evil shall come upon you. You shall not know from where it arises, and trouble shall fall upon you. You will not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon you suddenly which you shall not know. Stand now with your enchantments in the multitude of your sorceries in which you have labored from your youth. Perhaps you will be able to profit. 
perhaps you will prevail. You are wearied in the multitude of your counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, and the monthly prognosticators stand up and save you from what shall come upon you. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. It shall not be a coal to be warmed by, nor a fire to sit before. Thus shall they be to you with whom you have labored. Your merchants from your youth, they shall wander each one to his quarter. No one shall save you. And we move right along to chapter 48. 48. Hear this, O house of Jacob, who are called by the name of Israel. You have come forth from the wellsprings of Judah, who swear by the name of the Lord and make mention of the God of Israel, but not in truth or in righteousness. For they call themselves after the holy city. They lean on the God of Israel. The Lord of hosts is his name. I have declared the former things from the beginning. They went forth from my mouth, and I caused them to hear it. Suddenly I did them, and they came to pass, because I knew that you were obstinate, and your neck was an iron sinew and your brow bronze. Even from the beginning I have declared it to you. Before it came to pass, I proclaimed it to you, lest you should say, My idol has done them, and my carved image and my molded image have commanded them. You have heard. See all this? And will you not declare it? I have made you hear new things from this time, from hidden things. You did not know them. They are created now and not from the beginning. And before this day, you have not heard them. Lest you should say, of course I knew them. Surely you did not hear. Surely you did not know. Surely from long ago, your ear was not opened, for I knew that you would deal very treacherously and were called a transgressor from the womb. For my name's sake, I will defer my anger, and for my praise, I will restrain it from you, so that I do not cut you off. Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction for my own sake. For my own sake, I will do it. For how should my name be profaned? And I will not give my glory to another. Wow. That's all I can say. Wow. We move right along, and we are enjoying the wonderful epistle named Ephesians, this great letter sent to the people in Ephesus. And today we will read chapter 4. Chapter 4. I, therefore, Paul says, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and 
one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, and these words fulfill Psalm 68, verse 18. When he descended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Wow. Just think about that. Now this, when it says, he ascended, what does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that it might fill all things. And he himself gave some, and now listen to the list, to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up. There's a growing process. May grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Whoa! Wow! I mean, those are some of the longest sentences you ever saw, aren't they? And just chuck full of truth for who Jesus Christ is. Truth. And that we can be in him. We can live out our lives in him. Following him, his example. Oh, hallelujah. We can cast off this world. Walk in him, in a righteous path. Woo! Praise God. All right, we move right along now to Psalm 68. We have already begun to read it yesterday. And so we will pick up with verse 19. Psalm 68, verse 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. Man, we could just stop right there. Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits, the God of our salvation. And that marvelous word, Selah. Selah, prostrate your whole being. Stop, meditate and think on that. Our God is the God of salvation. And to God the Lord belongs, escapes from death. But God will wound the head of his enemies, the hairy scalp of the one 
who still goes on in his trespasses. The Lord said, I will bring back from Bashan. I will bring them back from the depths of the sea, that your foot may crush them in blood, and the tongues of your dogs may have their portions from your enemies. Wow, that's fierce, isn't it? They have seen your procession, O oh God, the procession of my God, my King, into the sanctuary. The singers went before. The players of instruments followed after. Among them were the maidens playing timbrels. Bless God in the congregations. The Lord from the fountain of Israel. There is little Benjamin, their leader, the princes of Judah and their company, the princes of Zebulon and the princes of Naphtali. Your God has commanded your strength. Strengthen, O oh God, what you have done for us because of your temple at Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Kings, will bring presents to you. Rebuke the beasts of the needs, the herd of bulls and the calves of the peoples, till everyone submits himself with pieces of silver. Scatter the peoples who delight in war. Envoys will come out of Egypt. Ethiopia will quickly stretch out her hands to God. Sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. Oh, sing praises to the Lord. Selah. To him who rides on the heaven of heavens, which were of old. Indeed, he sends out his voice, a mighty voice. Ascribe strength to God. His excellence is over Israel, and his strength is in the clouds. O oh God, you are more awesome than your holy places. The God of Israel is he who gives strength and power to his people. Blessed. Be God. Blessed be God. And we wrap up today's reading with Proverbs, Mishle, chapter 24, verses 3 and 4. Proverbs, chapter 24, 3 and 4. Through wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Wow. Is that how you look upon your house? I do. Oh, I'm so grateful for this little house that I live in. Like I've told you before, four four rooms, and there's a beautiful fireplace in each room. Beautiful mantle, hearth. They don't work, they're shut off. We heat by heat, <laughs> but they're beautiful. And I can put pretty things to just kind of sit in there. Look upon your house as a treasure a treasure from the Lord. And look at the beautiful things that have come into your life. And most of them all have a story, don't they? They have a story. You could tell people about each and everything. Well, all right, let's go to prayer. That mighty, powerful tool of choice. Hallelujah. Father God, we want to give you great thanksgiving for this word today. Oh my, 
you do fill us on a daily basis when we keep ourselves in your word. I feel like I've had a rich meal with you, precious Father God. Thank you, Jesus, for you have fulfilled this word. Thank you, precious Jesus, you came down out of all your glory to walk as a man and to suffer everything that we suffer, and then some. You suffered more than anybody. And Lord, the fact that you took our sins on you, that you bore them to the cross, that cruel, cruel, terrible way to die. Jesus, you took them to the cross, and by the shedding of your blood, our sins were covered, never to be seen or mentioned again. You even went down like we just read today. You went down. You went down to Sheol areas, to hell, to all the cavities that are there. And you brought up the redeemed who were waiting for you to come. Brought them with you on the trip back up and took them on to heaven. Oh, hallelujah. How exciting. And you have not left us forsaken. <clears throat> you are coming again. And by all the prophecies being fulfilled continually here now, surely it will be soon. But whether it is or it isn't, we need to look at today as the day you might come. So precious Jesus, we are looking we look up to the sky for not a baby next time, but you will burst forth in all your glory in the most glorious cloud our Father ever made. I'm sure of that. And you will come and get your children. Such hope, Lord, we thank you for that. Such encouragement and, and such a a stable foundation, a settled word. You're not going to change that. It's been spoken, and that's the way it will be. And it will be glorious. So thank you, Lord, for washing our sins away. Lord, we hold up Jerusalem, this great city. And Lord, you are moving Jerusalem and all that is happening within her city limits. You are preparing for the second coming. Some things are very hard to see. And Lord, you are taking care of the enemies that try to tear it down. We thank you, Lord, that we see your people now being brought home. This great, amazing prophecy. Daily, daily bringing your people home from the farthest corners how wonderful lord we we ask that you help them the the one who feels absolutely the least worthy they have things they need to do they need to learn hebrew so they can converse on a daily basis in the country father god they need to learn how the people live there what is good to do what isn't Precious Father, we thank you that they have, the whole nation has prepared programs, actually, to help every immigrant who comes home. We bless you for that, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that the whole country has to go into the military for two years. It's the only country in the world we can say every person in it is prepared. They know how to handle a gun. They know how to go to war as a whole nation, if need be. Oh, precious Lord, how you love your people. How you love your people. So beautiful. You are the greatest example of love. And furthermore, you are love. We glean on a daily 
basis from you, Lord. It's our desire to walk in a righteous path. So Lord, help us, please. We bring you, Lord, all of the issues of our life, all of the problems, all of the things that we are struggling with. Lord, we bring them to you and we lay them at your feet. And we know that you know. You've counted the hairs on our head today. You know, you know more about ourselves than we do. And Lord, we can trust you. We come to you in prayer. And we say, Lord, please bring answers. Bring healings, please, Lord. Please, Lord, I hold up a special little year and a half old baby named Charlotte. And she's the great granddaughter of dear friends. She's only one and a half years old. And she has a, a kidney problem. And so, Lord, we hold Charlotte up to you. And we'd ask, Lord, we know that you can repair that kidney in the, in the blink of an eye. You can put in a new one in the blink of an eye. But Lord, we are asking, please, please bring healing however you desire to this precious little one. The whole family, Lord, is distressed and, and praying and lifting her up and we join them. And we'd ask that little Charlotte would be healed totally. We give you praise. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory. And all of God's people went ahead with your own prayers, expecting and believing for answers, talking with your precious Father God, talking with Jesus, bringing Holy Spirit into your very being, asking forgiveness for your sins, Let's do all the things that we know are good and right and righteous from his word. That we might walk a righteous path. That we might come in to peace in our hearts, no matter what's going on around us. Peace in our own hearts. Confidence in our Father God and in our precious Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Have a great day in him. I love you so much. Bye-bye.